Hi, so do you guys remember when this group called Students for Fair Admissions sued Harvard? And basically they were trying to abolish affirmative action. And if you do a quick Google search of Students for Fair Admissions, you're hit by this very subtle tagline. Were you denied admission to college? It may be because you're the wrong race. Hmm. Uh, well, that's a very different topic for another video. There was something very useful that came out of that case. And basically Harvard was forced to release info about their admissions process and they were forced to basically show how they select and they rate students. I feel like not enough people know about this and not enough people actually know about the Harvard rating scale and how it works. I think there's some major takeaways that you can get from this admissions data and hopefully it can help you build your application in a way that is beneficial. And if Harvard's not your dream school, don't worry. I'm pretty sure like most Ivy League colleges are going to have a similar admissions process to Harvard. The information I'm about to tell you is probably going to apply to other schools as well and might help you get in someday. So Harvard basically rates all of their applicants in four different categories. And one of them is academics, second one is extracurriculars, third one is athletics, and fourth one is personality. And Harvard basically rates all their applicants in these four areas on a scale of one to six. I, I mean, I think it's pretty funny that they do it like this. I don't know, it just reminds me of like high schoolers rating each other. Um, based on how they look. Okay, that's a bad analogy. But anyway, so basically one is the best, right? One is like the, oh my God, you're a God. And six is like, you fucking suck. First off is academic rating. 0.5% of applicants get a one in this category, while 42.3% of applicants get a two. So basically half the applicants are getting a one or two in this category, which makes sense because it's Harvard and you need to be pretty good academically in order to get in. A one is described as a genuine scholar near perfect scores and grades in most cases, combined with unusual creativity and possible evidence of original scholarship, possible national or international level recognition in academic competitions. A two is described as an excellent student with superb grades and mid to high 700 scores on the SAT, 33 plus ACT, possible local, regional, or national level recognition in academic competitions. A three is a very good student with excellent grades and mid 600 to low 700 SAT scores, or 29 to 32 ACT. And you can see what four and six are below. Perfect scores are not gonna be good enough to actually make you stand out. A perfect score at most is gonna give you like a two rating. And the difference between a one and two here is that students who get a one, which by the way is very, very hard. The difference is that they're achieving at a level that is truly unusual. They're doing like extensive research. They're winning national or international level STEM competitions, or they're winning national or international writing competitions. They're actually extreme overachievers in either research or professional work or competitions. They're really just outstanding. So when people obsess over test scores and they obsess over like getting 50 points more on the SAT or getting like one or two more points on the ACT, it doesn't make sense because most of the time, it's not gonna even make an actual difference in your academic rating at most of these schools. They aren't gonna care about that 50 or two extra points on the SAT or ACT. So next up, we have the extracurricular rating. In this category, 0.3% of applicants get a one and 23.8% of applicants get a two. So a one is defined by Harvard as unusual strength in one or more areas, possible national level achievement or professional experience, a potential major contributor at Harvard, truly unusual achievement. A two is defined as strong secondary school contribution in one or more areas, such as class president, newspaper editor, etc., and or significant involvement in organizations outside of school, possible local or regional recognition, major accomplishments that have had an impact outside the classroom. A three is defined as solid participation, but without special distinction. Upgrade a three plus to a two minus in some cases if the EC is particularly extensive. Okay, and the rest you can read for four and six. Basically, the difference difference between a one and two here is in order to get a two, you basically got to be pretty involved in everything. You got to achieve like an elite local or state level, right? But in order to get an actual one in this category, you have to be like achieving at a super high level and at a national and international level. And this is the same as the previous rating where basically you have to set yourself apart so much from everyone that like you just are a fucking superstar. Like these are people who you look at them and you're like, oh my God. 
I'm having an existential crisis. These guys are achieving more than I probably ever will in my entire life at the age of 18. So unless you're one of those people, you're probably gonna get a two or lower. But if you are trying to get a one, you gotta be like the LeBron James of debate, or you gotta be like the Tiger Woods of Science Olympia. I don't even know. So we're on to athletics, where 0.9% of applicants at Harvard um, get a one and 9.2% of applicants get a two. So one is an unusually strong prospect for varsity sports at Harvard, possibly desired by Harvard coaches or recognition for individual athletic achievement or championships at the national, international, or Olympic level. A two is defined as strong and long-standing or three to four years of secondary school and their travel team contribution in one or more sports. Leadership roles such as captain or co-captain, possible individual recognition at the state or regional level, possible walk-on to a varsity team. A three is defined as an active participation, possibly some leadership and or recognition for individual accomplishments at the local or conference level. And important to note here, a four is little to no participation, but this is not a negative. It makes sure to say that this is not a negative. This rating can only help you. If you're playing a sport, you're gonna get at least a three probably. And if you're achieving at a really high level, but you're not quite good enough to get recruited by Harvard, you're gonna get a two. And if you're good enough to get recruited by Harvard or you're like Michael Phelps, Olympic level, I don't know how many people are Olympic athletes or applying to Harvard. But anyway, you're gonna get a one if you actually are getting recruited by a Harvard coach. If you're an elite athlete, getting recruited is honestly such a cheat code, especially at D1 schools. Go for it if you want to. Okay, so onto the personal rating, obviously very subjective, but here we go. 0.0% of applicants get a one in this category, which is less than 50 students every year are getting a one in the personal rating, by far the lowest. And and 20.8% of applicants are getting a two in this category. So a one is defined as truly outstanding qualities of character. Student may display enormous courage in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles in life. Student may demonstrate a singular ability to lead or inspire those around them. Student may exhibit extraordinary concern or compassion for their peers. Student receives unqualified and unwavering support from their recommenders. A two is defined as very strong quality to character. Student may demonstrate strong leadership. Student may exhibit a level of maturity beyond their years. Student may exhibit uncommon genuineness, selflessness, or humility in their dealings with others. Students may possess strong resiliency. Student receives very strong support from the recommenders. Three is generally positive, perhaps somewhat neutral qualities of character. A four is defined as questionable or worrisome qualities of character. And a five is worrisome personal qualities. So if you're getting a four or five, you're probably a jackass. But anyway, basically in your essays and stuff, which is the main component that goes into the personal rating, they're just looking to see like how good of a roommate you would be. That's, that's one of the things always here like would people enjoy spending time with you that is a big thing they don't want a bunch of jackasses running around campus and ruining experiences for others i think this is by far the category people know the least about because it's all very subjective right just try your hardest in your essays do some writing practice throughout your high school career i think that's probably gonna help you a lot when actually dealing with your college essays and just let your voice shine through i honestly don't really know what else to say here because it is so vague so this is chances of admission to Harvard based on all the ratings that we just talked about. So if you have an academic rating of one and no other ones, you have a 68% chance of getting into Harvard. If you have an extracurricular rating of one and no other ones, you have a 48% chance of admission. If you have a personal rating of one and no other ones, you have a 66% chance of getting into Harvard. And if you have an athletic rating of one and no other ones, you have an 88% chance of getting into Harvard. Disclaimer, um, as you saw earlier, if you don't have have like any sports experiences, it cannot hurt you. It can only help you um, for the athletics. So athletics, I would say, is the most important part of the application if you're really good, and it's the least important part of the application if you're not so good. I think it goes vice versa for um, the EC part. So like, if you're really good in the extracurricular department, it doesn't help your application as much as the other parts. But if you're really bad in that department, it shows a lack of like passion for anything outside of school or whatever. They're not gonna like that. And that's why I say that extracurriculars, you gotta have them, even though a one will not help you as much as the other departments.
Three ratings of two and one rating of three or four will give you a 43% chance of admission. And four ratings of two, so all four categories are a two, 68% chance of admission. And getting a one in any category is really hard, like I said. So if you're gonna try to go for a strategy where you try to get a bunch of twos, it could work too. If you feel like you're not that special, just try to be somewhat special in multiple categories. I don't know, that might work. So for what Harvard calls weaker candidates, no ratings of one or two, you have a 0.1% chance of getting in. The first and most obvious thing you can take away from this is that getting a one is obviously an extremely, extremely high boost to your application. I think Harvard this year had like a 4% acceptance rate. And if you get a one in these categories, your chances go up to 50 or 60 or 70%. Second takeaway is being well-rounded kind of fucking sucks. While people who are getting a one are excelling over almost every single person in their grade and basically that category, people who are getting twos are also achieving more than most people in academics or athletics or personal rating. That is not easy. Like, I mean, a two seems very easy compared to a one, but if you're trying to get a two in academics, a two in athletics, a two in extracurriculars, and then a two in your personal rating, do you realize how hard that is? You're getting near to perfect SAT scores, near to perfect grades, okay? You're getting involved in multiple clubs and you're like getting leadership positions in a lot of them. And then on top of that, you are an athlete that is cheating at a state or national level. And then on top of all of that, your essays and your recommendations are really good. People are saying being well rounded that now is overrated in the college admissions process because it's very hard to pull off. So if you look at your current high school profile and then you review like the guidelines and the standards for each number in each category, you can try to figure out your pathway through high school and what will give you the highest chance for admission. Because like, let's say you are a person who is trying to spread yourself out a lot and you are trying to get twos in almost every category. Then you can figure out like, okay, how much do I need to work at school in order to get a two in academics? How much do I need to work on my sport in order to get a two in athletics? How much do I need to work on these clubs? And based on those standards that I just talked about, what do you need to do? How do you split up your time in order to try to get those twos in every single category? And if you figure that you have one main area that you're really excelling at, and you have one main thing that really makes your application pop, then just go ahead and dedicate yourself fully to that. If you realize that the one in that category, while very, very hard to achieve, is actually feasible. You can use these numbers, you can use these standards in order to figure out where you stand right now in each of the different categories and what your plan of attack should be from this point on and build an application that Harvard wants to see. Again, getting to Harvard is insanely hard as these numbers show, but hopefully this video helps make it a little bit more clear. And one more thing, I just want to thank everyone so much for the support that I've been getting on this channel recently. We've been gaining like over 50 subscribers every day for the past few days, which is fucking insane. I never expected people would actually want to watch my content. But the way things have been going, I'm definitely going to be doing this in the future for probably quite a while. I really love making videos. I love entertaining people and helping people out. And yeah, if you're new here, um, please consider subscribing or liking the video if this helped you out or was mildly interesting. It really means a lot. Thank you guys again for all the support and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.